Dearly beloved, we have gathered here today <laughs> to talk about data. I'm going to give you three ways to improve your current data. So I'm going to speak to you as if you were a data collector, and I think in nowadays everybody is a little, right? Um, if the clicker works, I'll be fine. And it doesn't. Yeah, there we go. So I run a company called Wokupa. We developed a small tracking application that you install on a computer, and that keeps track of what software you're using, what websites you're visiting, and what ads you are seeing. Um, this is all being used by researchers nowadays. We started out as a social network, but nowadays we're very much a research company. Uh, one of our clients is, for instance, Tina's Nipo. Other one is uh, Motive Action, Innovate. They deploy these trackers inside panels, so people that have uh, opted in to uh, receive our tracking application, and afterwards, uh, this data, uh, which I just mentioned, gets sent to a dashboard. The dashboard is basically a way to analyze the data, to make sense of it, and that's pretty much uh, 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 what we do. We make people or we let people understand the digital landscape of today's consumers. So, you know, not to dive in, uh, into it in, uh, in detail, but this is how, uh, pretty much how it looks. Um, that we allow people to compare uh, usage of different sites. Uh, you can, for instance, say, all right, people who book a ticket on booking.com, um, where do they like to shop for clothes? Or you can say, um, when do people that have two kids, uh, one car, and uh, have uh, affinity for football, where uh, do they read their news? This is all things that we, that we allow to be, be, be tracked. And getting back to those three things I wanted to show you today, the first thing, the most important thing in everything we do every day is the, the, the user, the consumer, the source. So what I'd like to say to you today is put your source first. How do you put your source first? Well, you begin with transparency. When we invite somebody to install our application, members of a research panel, we tell them what we are going to track, how long we are going to track it, and we tell them if they want to quit, they can. It's not spyware, it's myware. You control it. So you can quit it at any time. You can also see what you've sent to us. Uh, the panel will also ask you uh, regularly, how do you feel about this? There's a huge part, uh, part of this is communication. Now, we're not the only ones who are good at privacy communication. Google is exceptionally good at this. Look at this page, for instance. This is one of the best privacy pages I've ever seen. It has a video, it has people, there's people talking to you, and uh, then you go to Facebook, and you got crap like this. As a Facebook user, this scares the shit out of me. And it should, you, know, you should feel the same way. Um, I think uh, Facebook is, is doing something fundamentally wrong here. It can be that a site that is this big has a privacy policy of alineas and not videos and not graphics and not understanding. This is very wrong. Responsibility. That's the second part I wanted to talk about. Responsibility is something you should go, uh, you should go in an over-ambitious way, looking for responsibility. So what we did, for instance, is that we uh, were a member, we're now a member of the MOA, which is a Dutch research organization. Uh, SOMR is the same, but for a global scale. We're a supporter of Bits of Freedom. Axel will be here on stage uh, after me. And uh, EFF is also an organization uh, uh, we support. These are all organizations that have looked at privacy and have said we need to make this a serious matter. The funny thing is also that SOMR and MOA are organizations that have come out of the industry. So I think this is a positive uh, development because legislative bodies are always too late. Innovation happens very quickly, especially when it comes to our privacy. But MOA and SMR have said, no, we will not stand for it. We will say from the industry ourselves what the law should be. And if the law isn't correct, we will make sure that it will be correct. Second part I wanted to talk about is outsourcing your scalability. When you work with large data sets, there's a very fundamental thing you need to think about. Namely, I'm not doing these calculations all the time. I'm only doing them when I want the calculated answer. Um, so what I mean by that is, is mostly uh, cloud computing. 
Um, I'm sure people here are already using uh, AWS, Amazon's cloud services. Uh, we use these. And these are all uh, techniques you can use when you use a large data set. And when you want to do a calculation, you could buy uh, performance. You could buy cycles as you need them. This is a fundamental change, I think, in how we uh, dissect data nowadays, because it allows you to be, uh, be scalable about it, uh, analyze as many data as you can, and do it sensible and do it fast. So please look at this. There is one but, and the but here is, where is my data? When I'm putting data on a cloud hosting service, it gets distributed. So I don't have one server where my, my data actually is. And this is a problem especially for my clients, whose rule is never put data on something where you won't, we don't know where it goes. So I'll have to go back to my clients and say, listen, uh, this is actually a benefit. Because you know, if, the data, if, if one of these machines fails, then the data will be distributed, and your data will always be safe. So I think that it's a definitely a, a, a benefit. But legislation will probably catch up some, uh, at some point. And we'll have to work with that. Uh, this is also an assignment to, uh, to Axel from Brits of Freedom. <laughs> Third point, and the final point I wanted to talk about, is play. And by play, I mean screwing around with data until something fun comes out. Um, one, you know, if you look at it, algorithms have, have many things in common. But one thing they can't is spot things like coincidences, or what uh, they can't uh, see interestingness. Uh, as much as Flickr would like to pretend it can. Um, what can you use to play around with your data? Well, um, I've put, a, put together a, a few slides, if they would show up. Come on, yeah. Um, that details some of the tools. This is, for instance, the uh, JIT. Um, this is a way to very easily create very interesting graphs, uh, very interactive graphs that you can use to really dissect data and to, uh, to, to get a good glance of what your data can do in certain types of formats. Um, another one is, of course, uh, oh, come on. This is the worst clicker ever. AM charts, uh, very handy flash tool to, uh, to make good looking graphs. Another one being Google charts, probably the most in, uh, interesting one, um, a very low key way to get started on making visualizations. Um, but what you can also just do is use Excel or use Illustrator. For instance, we did this with uh, Illustrator. Uh, Wired Magazine asked us uh, last year to plot out the computer usage of 500 of their readers. And when we got the data out, we had the question of, OK, so now what are we going to do with it? It turns out that Illustrator worked, worked great for this situation because we just needed a report. We needed something that was visually uh, uh, tangible and was also able to, to, I was able to edit it in very specific uh, ways. So we ended up with uh, this graph, which illustrates the, the average day of a, of a wired reader. And we made all these weird assumptions beforehand, like, OK, there's a new Batman game out. I'm sure that every wired reader has probably played it. And it turned out to be correct. Um, but we also made really stupid, uh, uh, stupid, you know, uh, questions like, okay, so I bet they go to bed really early. Well, they didn't. Um, I bet they uh, all visited the site of Wired once. Uh, they didn't. So all these assumptions were incredibly, incredibly stupid, but they were good. It's better to start with 40 stupid questions and leave uh, with one proven than to start with three very thought out questions and only have two proven. In closing, I want to give you three actions, because that's what you're looking for when you're doing a present, uh, presentation, right? You want actions. First of all, as I said, put your source first. So what does it mean in action? In action, it means go to Oxel and make an appointment. <laughs> go to the Bits of Freedom office, drink their coffee. They have very good coffee. Uh, just sit there and listen to what they have to say about your business. This is very important. These are people who, have, who spend every day thinking about your sources. So treat them with respect. Outsource scaling. One of the first things you can do is go to your tech guy, or if you're a tech guy, go to another tech guy and ask them, what are we doing right now with cloud hosting and how are you making data better? Third thing is the play element, which I, uh, which I spoke about. Right now at Wakupa, we have a thing called uh, Data Day. 
And it's very, a very easy concept. We have one day every month where the whole team comes together. We use the tools which I just uh, shown you, or we build our own ones, and we screw around with our data. Uh, but the most important thing in, during that day is that we're all so incredibly stupid. We're, uh, we're making wild accusations that have no, absolute no ground, but that's the way of play, right? Play is, play is sometimes stupid. Play is naive. And so what I'm uh, trying to tell you here today is uh, please be very, very stupid about your data. Thank you. Thank you, Robert.